Hey there. So I have this Spark laptop that a friend of mine gave me that I would really like to log into. Unfortunately, I don't know the root password. So I thought I'd do a quick video on how I'm going to get around that. The laptop, um, when I boot it into single user mode, which is frequently the way to get around these things, also asks for the root password, which is good for security. Uh, not so good for me, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot the system off a Solaris install CD, and then I'm going to modify it from there. You could also remove the disk from the laptop, and in my case the disk actually sits in the lower docking module here, so that's uh, not quite as difficult as it sounds. And then connect it to another machine, preferably a Sun, although you can do it on a Linux machine if you have Sun disk labels turned on and modify the disk externally. I have my CD-ROM drive, I've got power supply for the CD-ROM drive, and I've got the cable hooking things up. This uh, cable goes from an IDC header, so uh, one of these, to a SCSI 2 header, narrow, on the back of the laptop through some crazy connector that I bought years and years and years ago and paid far too much money for. My Sun CD-ROM drive, remember when I was complaining about this stuff on the E450 video, I said that they kept ejecting. Apparently it's like the, um, oh, not Cyquest, I Omega, click of death, because this used to work, now since being plugged into the E450, it does not. I think maybe it's probably unrelated and it's just unable to read the CD and so it keeps ejecting them out. I'm not sure. Uh, I can't make this work though. This is the last 512 byte block CD-ROM drive, SCSI CD-ROM drive that I have and I think it's a either a single speed or two speed so it's slower than the second coming so let's get it booting first. So we're at open boot here, and we're going to boot the CD-ROM into single user mode. The CD that I'm using is a Solaris 9 install CD. I have uh, SunOS 414, I have Solaris 10, two different releases. And this Solaris CD I discovered was in my Enterprise E4000 drive tray, the previous owner, uh, obviously, uh, when I was trying to harvest its Sun CD to see if it worked better than this one. And the answer is no, it does not. So, um, but bonus, I got a Solaris 9 CD, which is handy because this is a Sun 4M architecture, and SunOS 4. Uh, will not boot on this, and Solaris 10, no, I'm sorry, backwards, Solaris 10 won't boot on this. They must have modified the way that it changed the boot process, because this bombs out when I attempt it. The SunOS 4 does not support the Sun 4M architecture, at least my CD installer doesn't, so it croaks when it tries to pull up the kernel. Solaris 9, however, does, and this unit has Solaris 7 on it already. Um, and a friend of mine suggested that what I should do is copy the password file off and then crack it. And because it uses a slightly older version of Crypt and I have access to hundreds of um, quad-core um, Intel Dell blades, I could probably do that relatively quickly, but if I can get access to the disk to get the shadow off, then I can just blank it, which is what I'm going to do. So, the password files on most Unixes after, like, the mid-80s, actually is made up of two files. There is the slash etc. password file and the slash etc. shadow file. And the password file has to have certain read attributes enabled so that the system can run. And when you, in the olden days, had the password field in the password file, people would just grab the entire file, crack it, 
and then get back into the system. Of course, back in those days, it probably took months to crack a file. Anyway, what they came up with is the password file has the user information, the grouping, all of that stuff, but it does not have the password. And then the, the encrypted password was moved to the shadow file, which has the username, I think it has the user ID, and then the encrypted password file, and that has very restricted read access. So only root level uh, programs, such as the login terminals, actually have access to this file. Um, if we were logging in as a non-privileged user, that would be a problem. Uh, we'd have to find an exploit in Solaris 7 to jump through to try and get access to the root, fast, uh, root user which I'm sure there are probably many. In my case, because I'm just mounting it off an external CD and I will be the root user, it's totally moot. This is probably going to take a while. How about we come back when it's actually up? So we're now at the single user system prompt. So the first thing we need to do is mount the internal disk and on um, Solaris install cd everything is under the devices directory which gives us the actual um, IO bus so we're going to get in ILMMU at 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 I think S bus at 0 by Oopsie daisy. And then we want ESP DMA at 4x84. ESP DMA. This is the address of the oops, SCSI controller on board. ESP DMA at 4 by 8, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What am I doing wrong here? ESP, oh, ESP, good gracious. Yeah. Then we have all of our disks. So we are SD at 0. There we go, and we want A, because that is the slash partition mount. File system UFS SD at 0 by 0 A on slash mount. And I can hear the internal disk mounting, mount, etc. And there's the internal disks, etc. directory. And let's see what we've got. Oops. There's our shadow file. And there's our encoded password. Now, I don't know how to use VIA on these older Solaris machines. I can use them on the newer ones, but not the older. So we're going to totally cheat. And we're going to use SID. And so we're going to use regex to remove the password. O, G, period, G, Y, S, N, K, Q, P, Y, 5, O. And this is an obnoxious way of doing it. But if it works, who cares? And the batteries went out on my camera. So, we catted out our updated shadow, which I called shadow.corrected. So up here is the root user from the original shadow file, and this is our encoded password here. And you'll see down here we have no encoded password. There is a blank field. This means that there is no password, and the system should simply let it log in. Now we need to verify that we get the permissions correct. And I could re-permission it, but I'm going to cheat again here and do something horrible. Actually, before we do that, let's back things up. Oh, dear Lord. And the CD is thinking as it's pulling up the shell. So we have our. Ah! <laughs> ah!
Okay. So, <laughs> oh, Jesus, it's far too early in the morning for this crap. Uh, so there's our blank password shadow. Then there's our backup. And we are up. Oh, let's make sure the permissions haven't changed, although I can't imagine how, but since I'm screwing up this frequently, it's best to be sure, and we are good. Change back to the root directory on the CD. We will unmount the internal disk. It's unmounted. And we're going to reboot back to the shell. Any minute now. There we go. I'm going to do a video on this laptop in the relatively near future, um, but I wanted to be able to get into it first. It actually has two disks installed. There's one inside the laptop body and then one inside the dock. And it appears that it's only booting off the one in the dock, which is kind of curious. Okay, so let's boot off the internal disk, which is zero, 00. And there it goes. So, see this should look familiar, IOMU, SBUS, ESP, DMA, ESP, SD. So the IO subsystem, this is an SBUS card, uh, ESP, DMA, so DMA, and then the disk itself. I'm kind of fudging the line because I'm not entirely positive how one thing ties to the next, but there's not that many things there. Since I do have a copy of the encoded password, I might take it to work and uh, crack it anyway just for grins to see how long it takes. Um, the machines these days, now I have access to like fast processors. None of them have uh, big FPU graphics cards in them, so it's not quite as good because uh, these days they can get something like 8 billion cracks a second on the monstrous, uh, sorry not FPU, GPUs, graphics processors, on the monstrous like Tesla cards and things like that, which is simply mental. Um, that's for like crappier uh, encoding schemes like um, LM and NTLM that the Windows machines uses rather than crypt, but I think it's still like over a billion encodings a second, which is plenty fast. Alright, system is coming up. System is ready, we should get a login in a second. There it goes. And I'm not gonna wait. Root. Ta-da! Magic. Cool, huh? Okay, so, there's that way of doing it. There are many, many others. Um, my example of using SID instead of VI just shows that there are lots of different ways of doing this. Some more unpleasant than others. I feel dirty, but I'll shower later. Alrighty then. Um, if you've been watching, thank you very much. Have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.